Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Before Japan D, we're gonna be doing something a little different. So, as you guys know, uh, currently on YouTube, there's this trend about putting things on a tier list. I've seen all kinds of different ones, ranging from like fast food to like Pokemon and other things. But today on Andy Before Japan D, we're gonna be ranking some uh, well-known and not so well-known. Uh, Japan YouTubers. So right now I have a list of 70 that I personally watch or have watched. Uh, some of them don't make videos anymore, but I wanted to include them on the list because I think you guys should check out their stuff regardless. And keep in mind, this is a pretty big list, but if you or your favorite YouTuber isn't on this list, I'm sorry, get good. So with that said guys, uh, we're gonna be going in alphabetical order so that way it's nice, fair, balanced, CNN, whatever. Anyway, so here we go. Starting off strong with probably the most well-known of the Japan-based YouTubers, uh, Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan. Um, Chris has really been killing it for you know the past couple years now. Um, his production value is really strong, and it just keeps getting better with the more videos that he puts out. But that being said. Um, my few criticisms of Chris and his uh, his work on the Abroad in Japan series is that I feel like he's kind of trying to be more of a low-rent PBS documentary and less of a high-quality YouTube show, if that makes any sense. Um, I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect between him and his audience. Um, it just seems to focus more on kind of the cool shots of Japan rather than how he feels about it. And it's kind of less about him and more about the location. Um, if that makes any sense, I don't know. I just feel like there's a bit of a disconnect between him and his audience. And we don't really get to see his personality shine as much as we used to in his uh, older videos. Um, but we do get to see it every once in a while. Um, his most recent video at the time's recording uh, where he showed his uh, college friend around town uh, it was pretty good, and it was kind of reminiscent of the old school abroad in Japan stuff. But uh, that aside, um, you can't go wrong with uh, his level of storytelling, pacing, production value, all that stuff. I just kind of wish he was a bit more uh, connected with his audience. So that being said, I'm going to give him an A for abroad. So next up we have... Akita Tom. Now, Tom um, is an old school YouTuber. He's been on the platform for years and years. Um, he originally started his YouTube channel uh, when he was a high school exchange student. I believe he comes from either Australia, New Zealand, I think Australia. Um, so he did an exchange program while he was in high school in Akita, <laughs> hence the name. And he made a lot of really good videos for the time. Uh, they're a bit dated looking now, because they were like 10, 12 years old. But uh, at the time, there was some pretty high quality stuff. And uh, a couple months back, he had his first kid. So he made a couple videos with his kid. And I hope that uh, he comes back and you know makes some more YouTube videos. Because uh, you know he's definitely got a nice, shining personality. So that being said, you know since he doesn't make as many YouTube videos as he used to, um, he goes like months without making anything. Uh, definitely got to give him a D rank here. And next up we have Andrew Higgins of Higgins in Japan. Now, Andrew's a good friend of mine. I first met him uh, at a YouTube summer get together back when I was living out in Japan. Uh, good guy. Uh, he kind of goes, uh, his videos are kind of from the Busan's Kevin school of video making, where it's very raw, not a whole lot of cuts or anything like that, uh, for better or worse. Uh, so I don't really see his production value getting much better. But again, he's a friend, and uh, a lot to say. I really wish he would kind of, you know, pace his stuff a bit better. But that's just my own personal feelings. So, Andrew, we're going to give you a nice C rank. So, there you go.
And next up we have Asagi from Asagi's Life. Now she's really been making the rounds on YouTube, doing collabs with all different kinds of people. And she's also into fitness. So that's really interesting to see um, because not a lot of Japanese people are into fitness. So it's definitely an interesting angle. And uh, she does a lot of the, you know, very similar stuff that you might see on YouTube of like going to Tokyo and things like that. But uh, yeah, you know, she's definitely got some, some good stuff, clapping with the right people. So I'm gonna give good old Asagi a nice B rank. Next up, we have a newcomer onto the scene, although she's been making Japan videos for about three years. We got Bethany, and she's from England. I recently subscribed to her, and she did a study abroad in Tokyo a couple years back. Then she went back to her home country, and now she's back again in Japan. So I'm um, really hoping that she's going to be making some good videos again, um, but she just recently moved back, so she hasn't really made a whole lot since coming back at the time of this recording. But again, looking forward to seeing more good videos from her. But as far as new stuff, generally have it, so I'm gonna give you a C rank. And so next up we have Bunny Tokyo. I first found out about her through uh, the Tokyo Creative group of people. I guess she works with them. And she was originally kind of, you know, more active on Instagram, but she's recently come back to YouTube and is making YouTube videos a bit more consistently, but uh, she doesn't have a whole lot up as of yet, time's recording. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what she does moving forward. Um, she's got a good sense of pacing, uh, the videos look great, and it's of some interesting, not as well covered stuff in Tokyo, which it's kind of hard to do since like every YouTuber goes after, you know, the trendy stuff in Tokyo. So it's pretty interesting to see and I want to see her do well. So I'm gonna give you a nice little B rank right there for Bunny. Next up, we got a YouTube ledge right here. We got Busan Kevin, otherwise known as Jalen Kevin or Jalen Kev, Kevin O'Shea, uh, the host of the Just Japan podcast, everything you want to know about Japan, as well as some other things. Uh, the man is <laughs> one of the hardest working, uh, not just on YouTube and in podcast land, but uh, in real life. Uh, he's been pretty much all around Southeast Asia, so he might as well just call himself Southeast Kev, or Southeast Asia Kev, C Kev. I don't know, because like he originally started in Korea, where he got the name Busan Kevin because he was living in Busan, Korea, South Korea at the time. Then he moved to Kobe, Japan to be with his wife, um, had some kids, and then after a while moved to China, and now he's moving again within China to Shenzhen, I believe, and just teaching English to the kids, living life, and I like Kev because, you know, his videos, um, they're not very well edited, he doesn't really, you know, edit his videos that much. Uh, it's mostly just like little clips of things. Uh, but the videos are fairly short, so you don't really get that bored with them. So it's not just like a 10 minute uh, just kind of rant about things usually. So even though the videos aren't very well edited, they're short, they're sweet. And uh, you can't deny this dude's work ethic and just like how many countries he's been to. The dude is very well-traveled. So with that said, Kev, gotta give you a B for Busan. And next up, we have another newbie to the scene. We have Captain Catch. And this guy has been making the rounds as of late. Uh, he's been collabing with some big YouTubers, been doing some live streaming and things like that and I've really been enjoying his content. I can tell he's really putting uh, some effort into the cinematography, production value of things, and I'm just, I'm just digging his stuff. Um, so I can only see him going up from here. Definitely give this guy a look. So put him in the B category. Next up, we have Chill with Lin, Lin. 
Um, she's a, uh, a recent, recently subscribed channel for me. Um, she's originally from Thailand, or Taiwan, I believe. Yeah, Taiwan. I think. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, she's a recent channel that I've subscribed to. And um, she's, uh, you know, a foreigner in Japan, but she's an Asian foreigner in Japan, which is something you don't really see all that often on YouTube. It's usually Western foreigners. So it's really interesting to get that perspective from somebody. Um, she's recently gone, gotten through a, a battle with depression. So um, I definitely know how depression goes. So definitely got to give her props for coming out of it in one piece. And she's making videos again. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing some more vids from her. So we're just going to give her a nice uh, C rank right here. And then next up we have Crescendo L Design. And if I butcher these names, I'm sorry, guys. Um, but anyway, this guy or gal, I don't know. Uh, this channel is a kind of a uh, a recent trend on YouTube I've noticed with the uh, Japan YouTuber scene in that it's less about the person and more just about the place. So they kind of show some clips of Japan without like a host or any person in there. So with this particular channel, they focus mostly on drone footage. So they have a lot of wonderful Japan drone footage, which is a rarity as far as Japan goes because their drone laws are very strict. But they got some, this channel has some fantastic drone footage of Mount Fuji and like local temples and other things. And I can't recommend this channel enough. It's just a nice like, kind of chill out and relax sort of channel and just kind of watch. So I'm gonna give this one an A rank. Um, if we were doing like little marginal stuff, I'd probably give them like a B plus, but I'm just gonna round up and give them an A. Okay. So next up we have Doga TV. Now these guys, have really been doing some good stuff. Uh, they're a little inconsistent with the uploads for whatever reason, but you know, I really like their style. It's kind of raw and real and less kind of hosty, even though they are like two hosts. Um, but I really like the, the feel of the series and I just wish that they would do like more consistent uploads. So for that reason, I'm gonna give them a D. So, upload more. Next up, we have Dogen, not to be confused with Doga TV. Now, this guy, uh, first heard about him through uh, the late Roger Swan. Um, he apparently was a, um, he was in like the same school, I guess, with Roger. And, you know, since then, he's gone on and made a pretty lucrative business himself and has really established himself within Japan. Um, times recording, he's released a uh, like an hour long deep dive on finances in Japan. It's really long, but it's very in depth, a lot of detail. Uh, I highly recommend you guys check it out. He's also got like Japanese lessons, all kinds of stuff. This dude is just you know a just a huge resource of Japan content. Now, granted, he doesn't have like the cool, you know, cinematography and stuff. It's pretty much just him in front of a camera, but just the amount of knowledge that he drops is fantastic. Dude is like super fluent in Japanese. It's definitely someone I look up to and respect. And um, sadly right now he's kind of going through some uh, physical issues. I guess he's got some nerve damage in his hands from holding his kids. So mm, my heart goes out to you, my guy. Um, so with that said, man, this dude's one of the hardest working YouTubers on the planet. Uh, I gotta give you nothing less than S. And speaking of hard workers, our next guy, Drift Hunter Albo. This guy, um, I met him through a friend of mine. So he's a friend of a friend. And you know, I've really enjoyed his climb up 
on the YouTube ladder. Um, he originally started off very small, like we all do, <laughs> but he's really progressed and I only see him going up from here. And the production value, the quality of everything that he does video wise is just tremendous. And like, <laughs> I just, I'm in awe of the stuff that this dude puts out. And his goal is to make a Netflix series about um, car drifting, car racing in Japan. Um, kind of think like Initial D in real life. That's kind of the main hook of his stuff. Um, and I think like <laughs> the dude's already on his way. Like he doesn't need Netflix money to make that documentary. He's already on his way. So like, dude, Albo, you're killing it, babe. Like, um, I only see you going up from here, but anything less than an S is a felony. Next up on the list is a YouTube OG, Eric Surf 6. Now, uh, just for some disclosure, I do work for Eric. Um, I edit his videos and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not gonna use that as bias. I'm just gonna remain as unbiased as possible, give my own personal opinions. So Eric is, like I said, an OG in the YouTube community. He's been making videos since like, what, 2006, 2007? Long freaking time. He's had several viral hits that have been featured even on The Ellen Show. So um, I only see him going up from here. He has transitioned over to um, food content through the Eric Meal Time series, and he's also doing the Eric Vlog Time series as well, kind of documenting his life and kind of giving you behind the scenes of the Eric Meal Time shows and just all kinds of stuff. And he's also extremely active on Instagram, and he's again like Albo and Dogan, one of the hardest working men or just YouTubers um, that I know of. And I only see him going up from here. And I can definitely see him hitting a million subscribers before year's end. So, um, with that said, I'll have to give him an S rank or six Eric Surf heads. <laughs> Eric Surf six heads. So, next up, we have Find Your Love in Japan, Nobita. Now, this guy. I have an interesting story with him because I actually knew Nobita, um, that's the host's name, uh, before he started really on YouTube, when he like very first started his, uh, his YouTube channel. And it was my last YouTube get together in Japan the, at uh, summertime 2015, woo. And he came up to me, he was really nervous, he was like, could you introduce me to like some big YouTubers and you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, bro, I don't even really know you. But, you know, we got to talking, he was telling me, like, about his channel and stuff like that. And I was kind of, like, iffy about it, but I could kind of see the potential. And I really liked his, his attitude towards it. So I was like, all right, you know, cool. And uh, eventually the dude, like, exploded as far as uh, subscribers and stuff goes. Um, he has had a little bit of controversy in the past involving some political opinions. So um, he has since kind of gone back to his roots of the Find Your Love in Japan series, and like, I'm happy with the dude. You know, I'm hoping that he continues to do good things. Um, definitely see him reaching 500,000 subscribers in the near future. So, um, Nobita, definitely gonna give him a B rank. And so, next up on the list is Frame Hungry, my boy Josh formerly known as Jay Hill Life. He has since transitioned over to more of a, uh, like a Peter McKinnon-esque channel. You know, he does like some gear reviews and talks more about the nitty gritty of, you know, content creation and things like that. Um, he's kind of, um, like I said, he's kind of going through a channel change at times recording. So, you know, he hasn't quite found his, uh, his uh, video shooting style yet. But he is very active on Instagram, posting a lot of great pictures. Killing it, Josh. Um, so definitely recommend you check out his Instagram. Um, but as far as YouTube goes, you know, he's not really posting as much as I'd like him to. And he's still kind of like finding his niche on YouTube. 
Like he's getting there, but he's not quite there. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to give you a D. So tell us more. Next up, we have Green Cyclist. So this guy is an interesting cat. So um, I found him through the Japan Circle Jerk uh, subreddit. And he's posted some um, interesting videos about certain J vloggers and things like that. And they're really like kind of funny. And, you know, I, I, I found them like really entertaining. So he's just basically like a shit poster, essentially. So I really like this guy's, uh, the cut of this guy's jib, as it were. So I'm definitely gonna give him a nice B rank. Right meow. And so next up we have Internationally Me. So um, she, you know, started rising onto the YouTube scene a couple years ago. Uh, she's not as prominent as she used to be because she doesn't really post as much as she used to. Um, but she does have some pretty interesting videos. Um, chances are you've probably seen some of her stuff if you look up like Japan content. Um, production value is pretty good. Um, but she doesn't really post as much as she used to. So we're going to have to give you a D rank. So post more. Next up, we have another new subscription in the box. We have It's uh, Nomers. So she is living in Tokyo, I believe, and kind of posting, you know, just kind of vloggy type stuff, you know, day in the life sort of dealios, you know, going to work and going to restaurants and things like that. So it's just typical, you know, daily vlog type stuff, but the production values pretty good for what it is and I can definitely see her really you know you know leaping forward as far as you know getting subscribers views things like that so I definitely see a lot of potential in her but uh, only time will tell so right now I'm gonna give you a solid C rank next up we got my man Dan from jaden.co.uk you guys check out his channel I'd appreciate it so Dan is living in Osaka and he's made some very informative videos uh, he doesn't really go out as much it's kind of like you know maybe like 70% inside 30% outside um, but the videos that he does make are very informative so if you're looking to like study abroad in Japan or like go to Japan to like teach English to the kids or whatever, especially outside of Tokyo. Um, Dan's got you covered, so definitely would recommend this dude. Got some good stuff. If you subscribe, I'd appreciate it. So we're gonna give him a solid B. Next up, we got my boy Joe from Joe Dro Productions. Uh, he's gone through some name changes over the years. He's originally known as Tokyo Joe Vlogs. They changed to Tired and Determined. Now he's back to Jodro Productions. So, um, like me, he's a U.S. Um, military veteran. Uh, he was in the Air Force, though. He wasn't in Navy like me. But uh, he's a veteran living out in Japan. I think he's uh, going to school and working in Japan right now. Maybe doing some contract work. I'm not sure. But uh, he's out there doing some good things. Uh, Video-wise, since he's made the, the transition out of the military, he's been a little inconsistent with the videos, and he's still, like with Josh from Frame Hungry, he's still trying to find himself as far as like what his niche should be. So I'm hoping that he does some good things. Of the videos that I've seen of him recently, they've been pretty decent, but I just kind of want to see like where he uh, takes it from here. So gonna give him a D. Next up, we got my boy Jonesy from Jones in for Japan. Now, this dude is a uh, second generation Japanese. Uh, he was born in America, he was born in Michigan, uh, living out there with uh, his mom, who also is on this list. We'll get to her later. Um, but he's most no known for his Twitch streams. So he doesn't really have a whole lot up on his YouTube channel. 
Um, he is looking to move to Japan, like me. And I'm hoping once he does, he'll make some good content. Um, he does have some stuff of his trips to Japan. Um, so I definitely recommend checking this guy out. But he's most known for his Twitch streams. So if you're looking for more consistent content, go there. But since he doesn't uh, make a whole lot of stuff on YouTube, I'm sorry, Jonesy, but you got to go in the E rank. Make some vids, my dude. So next up, we have a very recent subscription. This dude I actually just subscribed to today after finding his stuff. Um, he was featured on a video from Find Your Love in Japan and found his channel and been really liking it. It is Kantan Japan. So. This dude is a guitar teacher in Japan. He's originally from England. And he his style kind of reminds me a lot of Jadan. It's just a lot of like indoor stuff with little bits of B-roll here and there. Uh, but of the B-roll that he does show, it's really good. And, you know, it's just really interesting to see like different occupations in Japan. Because like typically with foreigners, you see them like teaching English or working in IT or, you know, maybe like being a student or something like that. Those are the, the typical occupations. But being a guitar teacher in Japan, eh? <laughs> so I think that's really interesting. And like I said, I just subscribed to him. So I can only see his potential going up from here. But uh, since I've only seen a couple of vids, I'm going to give him a solid C. So next up, we have K. This dude is uh, a member of Tokyo Creative, I believe. And I found him when I was looking up videos for Yokosuka. Because I guess uh, either his parents or his relatives or whatever are in the military. So he has base access. So I saw him kind of running around base and stuff. So I'm guessing maybe he's like, an, like, a, like a Navy brat or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Um, but, you know, this dude's production value is kind of, eh, you know, it's just like clips and stuff. Um, he kind of goes on like the, you know, that like trendy, like hype beast type culture. Um, you know, it, it can kind of range from like charming to just like cringy. Uh, it just kind of depends. So I'm going to have to give this dude a solid E because every kiss begins with K, you know, the following letter is E. So there you go. So next up, we have another YouTube OG, someone I've been following for a very long time, Loretta from the Kamushi-chan channel. So she is just a phenomenal, you know, <laughs> I can't recommend her enough. Um, she has studied abroad in Japan. She has gotten her master's degree recently from a Japanese university. Her Japanese level is just tremendous, through the roof, like, incredible. She also runs her husband's channel, uh, Boomlore, who I'd also recommend, but it's essentially a secondary channel for her, so I kind of lumped them in together. Um, but anyway, Loretta has just been killing it. On YouTube uh, her production value has gone up significantly over the years she's not rested on her laurels at all she's just constantly improving and it's just tremendous to watch her succeed you know so uh, I can't give her anything less than an S she is just like top tier youtuber top tier person so next up we got my man Jimbo uh, from the Kids Sure You Can channel. So, like me and like uh, Joe from JoJo Productions, he is a fellow American veteran. Uh, he was in the Air Force, stationed uh, in somewhere near Tokyo, I believe. I forget the uh, the, the, the the base name. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jim, I forgot. Um, but he was stationed out in Tokyo uh, area, um, and made some videos out there, and then once he got out of the Air Force, he decided to go to college in Japan. So he went to Lakeland University in Tokyo, and then later transferred to Temple University, also in Tokyo, and he's recently graduated from those places as well. So 
Um, I can't wait to see what he does moving forward. Um, the focus of his channel is mostly on retro games, especially retro import games. So it's a very niche topic, but um, can't find anybody better than Jim to uh, discuss those things. He often does like Akihabara hauls, and he also does like some food videos here and there. And you know, there's a couple talking about his life in Japan, but it's mostly focused on the retro import games. So definitely got to give old Jimbo a watch. So we're gonna put him at B rank. And so next up we have La Sweet Pea Paris. Um, she's somebody I've fairly recently started following in the past like couple months or so. Um, she's going out to a, a university out in Tokyo and she's just kind of vlogging her life. So she's kind of doing the uh, like the day in the life type vlog. Um, the editing's pretty okay. Uh, she's just kind of going about her day and doing stuff. So nothing, you know, too out of the ordinary, I guess. So we're gonna give her a solid C rank. Next up, we got Greg from Life Where I'm From. And he also has a good channel called Life Where I'm From X, which goes into more deep dives of other Japan topics. But this dude, you know, like Dogen, he is just such a resource on things Japan. He also works at home, so he has a lot of insight as far as, you know, how to work at home in Japan, um, just kind of doing his business and things like that. So it's really interesting to get his perspective there. He's also got a family that he raises, you know, since he's at home, so he's pretty uh, hands-on with that. And, you know, the content that he has is top-notch. The editing, production values, Definitely above average. Um, it's not like super duper, you know, high budget type stuff, but it is definitely up there. And he's just such a resource when it comes to things Japan. So got to give him an S rank for sure. Next up, we have uh, Love Liz Kelly. Love Liz Kelly. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Kelly. Help a brother out. How do you pronounce your name? Um, I'm just going to say Loveless Kelly. Um, she was formerly known as Strawberry Mochi. Um, that's how I first found her, her stuff. I also read her blog. That's kind of where I came back to her YouTube channel from. Um, she's got some interesting content, I guess. She does kind of do the day, day in the life, daily type vlogging stuff. But she also released a series called Girl, Girl Abroad, which I think is a really well put together series. Uh, a lot of, you know, she, you can tell she really put some effort into it. So I've been watching that. And recently she got engaged to somebody in L.A. And they're moving, well, he's moving with her uh, to Japan because he's, he's Japanese. So uh, they're going to be moving Back. Well, he's going to be moving with her to Japan, if that makes any sense, Jesus. Um, so I'm um, really happy for her, glad she's doing well in life. I think we'll give her a C rank. Next up, we have Lyle Hiroshi Saxon. So this dude is an interesting cat because um, his stuff, he's been in Japan since like 88, 89, I think 89, so like tail end of the Showa era, very early Heisei. Um, and he's been documenting his, his journey there and everything else. So he has like a mixture of retro Japan footage as well as like some newer stuff. So it's really interesting to see how Japan has developed over these past 30 plus years and to see kind of the mixture of the old and the new um, from his footage is just really interesting and the dude just like posts constantly so you'll get like two or three videos a day um, which can be a little off-putting I'll admit and some of the clips aren't really that well edited again he kind of went through like the Busan Kevin school of video making where it's just kind of like slap some stuff together um, but unlike Kevin I think they are a bit long in the tooth so um, 
As much as I like his stuff, I'm gonna have to give him a D rank here. And so next up, we got my man Tino from Mexican Samurai 100. He also runs another channel called Kyushu Danji, um, which I definitely recommend you guys check out. But um, so this timeline doesn't get all crowded with secondary channels. We just put his Mexican Samurai channel on there. And that's the channel that um, I really like the most because it has a lot of his like kind of life lessons and things like that. And the dude has a really good philosophy and I just like his vibe man he's just like a really cool dude so he's been in Japan for like 20 plus years probably going on 30 by now and he's seen it all done it all and again I just like his uh, his view on life so even though he doesn't really make ch uh, videos for that channel as much anymore and he's a little inconsistent with the Kyushu Danji channel um, Definitely recommend you guys check his content out. But again, because he doesn't update a lot, I'm um, going to have to give him a D rank. But definitely check his stuff out for sure. And next up, we have another YouTube OG. Put her up here so you can see better. We have Michaela. So she's uh, from Canada. She originally came over to Japan to like study abroad. I believe she was a high school exchange student. Not sure. Um, but she's been in Japan, she's been in uh, Fukuoka, which is southern Japan, the island of Kyushu. Uh, she's been in Fukuoka for like 12 plus years now, um, doing her thing, and I really admire her production value. Like, the videos that she's put out over the years has been top-notch production value. I really like her personality, and, you know, I want to see more videos from her because... Uh, a couple years back, she kind of went through this uh, depressive episode. Um, I don't know all the details, but, uh, you know, since then, she hasn't been posting videos on YouTube as much. I think she's kind of let the, uh, the haters, the negative comments get to her a little too much, and she hasn't been posting as much. And I really miss her, her content, man. Like, you know, when she makes videos, they're always top-notch. And, you know, her and her boyfriend have been making videos lately, and they just been nothing but the best. But I just, I want to see her back on YouTube making videos on a consistent basis. And, you know, she's just, like, she's got so much good stuff, and she's been making videos for years. So, you know, but because she doesn't make stuff as consistently as she used to, I will have to give you an A rank. It would have been an easy S, but uh, gotta make them vids, Michaela. I miss you. So next up, we have a rather unsung hero on YouTube, Mondaiji.com, David Pavlina, um, cousin to a very popular personal development, personal developmentalist, whatever, <laughs> Steve Pavlina. So David is a cousin of his, and that's who I found out his channel because Steve posted a link to it. And he had a podcast called Japanatron. And it's just, he's a wonderful storyteller. I really like his stories. And his podcasts aren't super long. They're about 20, 30-ish minutes on average. Um, but they're really good stuff. And he's kind of tried bringing it into like a video format, which is kind of, eh, especially since the sound quality kind of took a dip. But uh, his older stuff's definitely top notch. Definitely recommend the Japanatron podcast. Um, Dave, I wish you would post more, my dude. I need more Japanatron in my life. For that reason, I got to give you a D. Come back to me, babe. Next up, we have a really popular a Japan YouTuber, but he's probably more well known on Instagram. Mr. Yabatan. Mr. Hotori Bikurista! That guy. So he's really found a niche for himself, just kind of playing up this character. His videos are super short, very like fast cut type stuff, um, usually about a minute, maybe a tad over. Uh, and it's just like really funny, dude speaking Japanese, but in kind of like a French accent. That makes any sense, you know? Um, and he's really getting popular. 
And he's been on like Japanese TV and stuff like that. Um, but his his videos are just kind of like candy, you know, short, sweet. Um, so we're gonna have to give him a B rank, right? Meow. For Hontore Bikurista. So next up, we have um, a good friend of mine, another Jim, uh, Molly. Uh, his channel is formerly known as Warmoth Strat. Um, he's been in Japan for over 20 years now. I think he's been in Japan since 91. So he's been there for uh, a good portion of his life. And it's just like, you know, for the like the super long long-term expats it's kind of crazy to think about because like they've missed so much like development in american culture and they're they've become so detached from it so i remember like talking to him about stuff and i'd mention you know like you like completely missed the 90s in america like you missed the whole like you know boy band thing and rap starting to come into things and like i would say britney spears he'd be like who <laughs> So he's kind of stuck in the 80s as far as that goes. But, you know, he's a great guitar player, great guy. His wife Tomoko is such a sweetheart. And, you know, he's been making videos for a while now. Um, it's kind of a mixed bag of things. Um, they're just kind of like fun, sort of corny, entertaining type stuff. You just think of like dad humor sort of deal. Um, but, you know, they're good people. And... Um, I have to give him a uh, rank of B. So don't be letting your meatloaf. So next up, we have another YouTube OG. We got My Argonauts, Jason. So Jason, of the My Argonauts channel, um, has been on YouTube for a long, a long, long time. And he has really um, made a name for himself as... Um, somebody who's went through the JET program. He has just a tremendous amount of resource when it comes to learning about what to do for the JET program. Um, the videos are a bit old now, so maybe there's some stuff that's been updated. But to get like the basic gist of the program and things like that, you know, I can't recommend anyone else more than Jason. And right now he's still in Japan doing his thing, you know. So, yeah, definitely check this guy out if you're interested in the uh, JET program, for sure. So, I'm going to give him a C rank. So, next up on the list, which is slowly getting more and more populated, might have to, like, overlay some guys. But uh, next up, we have Nama Japan. Nama meaning, like, uh, fresh, raw, I believe it's fresh. Um, and this guy does kind of like uh, the food tour, uh, mukbang-ish type videos where he goes to like ramen restaurants mostly. Uh, but he does do other things as well. And um, he's got some pretty interesting videos, been to some good places. Production value is pretty, pretty okay. So I only see him going up from here. And for that reason... I'm um, just going to give him a solid C. And so next up, we have another interesting person. We have Nichibe Trader. So this dude, um, he doesn't really make videos anymore, but he does have an interesting collection of videos from his time in Japan in the 80s. So again, another like retro vlogger type thing. I fucking love these channels so much. Um, again, dude doesn't make videos anymore, so you know, don't expect a whole lot. But uh, definitely check out his 80s Japan uh, playlist of his uh, video clips and stuff in Japan. You know, it's just kind of amazing to me to think, like, how is he able to, like, vlog and stuff with, like, you know, it's one thing to, like, vlog with your phone or, like, a small camera or something, but this dude had to carry around, like, the old-ass, like, VHS tape-type camcorders and just to try to fit that... Uh, around like the train station and like a capsule hotel and stuff was nothing short of incredible. So um, definitely check this dude out. But again, because he doesn't post videos anymore, you gotta give him an E rank. Poa Showa. Next up, we have Nippon Wandering TV, who is 
Uh, probably the second biggest as far as um, the kind of raw Japan style of videos. Um, they like to do kind of these long walks around uh, different parts of Japan. There's no dialogue or anything like that. It's just them kind of wandering around parts of Tokyo and Yokohama and stuff like that. It's just kind of nice and calm and just kind of, you know, they record the uh, the ambiance of wherever they are so you get to hear conversation and stuff as they're walking around and you know it's just kind of a nice calming channel you know it's like watching you know videos of people riding on a train you know it's it's nice it's calm you know the footage is nice and stable as well you know it's just kind of like chill out material basically so gotta give this one a b so next up we have Obachan. So we have Obachan's class. Now she is the mother for my boy Jonesy from Jonesing for Japan. And she's made some pretty interesting videos. She's a relative newcomer to the uh, you know the Japan video scene. Um, she's Japanese and she moved to America, living in Michigan. And uh, she makes videos kind of teaching people like how to say things in Japanese, little bits of the Japanese culture and things like that. And it's really interesting to get a perspective from somebody who's older and to kind of glean their knowledge on things. So um, I only see her channel just getting better and better. And um, I'm wishing good things for her. So right now I'm gonna give her a C. And so next up we have Chris Okano, Okano TV, Okano Shacho. This dude is a mover and shaker in Japan. Um, little fun fact, his mom was a very famous uh, foreign singer in Japan back in the 70s. And uh, his dad, while being, you know, Asian, in uh genetically um was raised in america so he has a very complex history um but as it involves chris um he's come to japan he worked in a lot of companies achieving like high rank within them he ran like was odigo tv i believe and then he's um in the past couple years he started up tokyo creative so he's the ceo for Tokyo Creative. And I first found Chris through his Odigo videos and then through his own channel, channel Okana TV. Um, he's always had really good informative videos. Production value has been uh, pretty top tier. And, you know, now that he's the head of a, you know, creative company, Tokyo Creative, in Tokyo, um, I only see it going up from here. But uh, that being said, you know, he is in charge of a lot of other things. So as far as his own personal channel goes, I don't really see him doing a whole lot more with it. He's probably going to focus more on operational stuff with Tokyo Creative. So his uploading is a little inconsistent and understandably so, of course. So for that reason, I'm going to have to give him a D rank. Next up, we have John Dobb from Only in Japan. Now, uh, much like Chris Broad, um, for people who have maybe, you know, an inkling of interest in Japan, you probably subscribe to this guy, so you probably already know his stuff. His production value is just insanely good. Um, everything about his videos is top-notch. He goes to a lot of, you know places ranging from kind of the trendy spots but also you know kind of more obscure spots as well um and he's just <laughs> a lot of a lot of good videos have come from it so I definitely recommend this channel uh if you haven't already subscribed to it so there we go give him a nice a rank next up we got ozzy ozzy awesome so awesome. So he's formerly known as Ozzy78, and I've been following Ozzy for a long time now. 
and um, his videos weren't always the best. Um, he always seemed very unconfident on camera, and just the production value was a little eh. But I do have to say, he's really stepped up his game, and it's definitely getting better, I can tell. And I hope to see him do good things in the future. And I can definitely tell that if he continues to up his game, he's definitely going to, uh, to really grow his audience. But for now, I'm going to have to give him an E rank. And so next up, we have another popular YouTuber, uh, Palo from Tokyo. Now... Again, he's probably in like the filthy casual Japan YouTuber um, category. So even if you have like an inkling of interest in Japan, this dude's probably been like all over your suggested feeds <laughs> with stuff. But um, he does have really good production value. His pacing and everything is really good. But I feel like uh, he's kind of more in that like host mentality where you don't really feel connected with Paulo the person, just more like, all right, dancing man, let tell me about Japan and tell me about this thing. You know, it's just, it, you don't feel as connected with Paulo. So um, for that reason, I'm going to have to give him a B. And so next up, we have Patricia Vagara. I think it's how you pronounce her last name. I'm terrible with names, by the way. So she's an interesting case. Now, at times recording, she's recently moved from Japan. I think she's back in America in Alaska, I think, last I heard. Um, but she has made a lot of great videos in Japan. Um, she's actually a US Navy spouse. So she's made a lot of good videos talking about that and kind of showing her apartment on base because um, she does have kids, and uh, kind of showing stuff like that. So I think it's a very interesting perspective to see on YouTube. It's not something we, we see all that often. Um, but since she's not in Japan anymore, um, that's definitely going to penalize her score. But I definitely recommend you checking her stuff out for sure. So we're going to have to give her a D rank. Next up, we got my boy, Zack Attack Snack from Phoenix787. Now, this dude, um, I met him at a Hanami party a long, long time ago. And, you know, he's doing some good things behind the scenes. You know, he's, you know, working, starting up a production company, uh, working with some movers and shakers in the scene, stuff like that. And he makes almost daily vlogs of his life in Tokyo. Uh, he originally started as a student at Sylvia University. Uh, he's since graduated and is working more uh, behind the scenes in production of things. So definitely doing good things there. Um, but that being said, his YouTube videos have been just kind of eh. You know, like the production value, especially for somebody who works in video production, I feel it should be a lot better. Um, he's gotten slightly better, but really, come on, Zach. I know you can do better than this, dude. Uh, so his videos have been kind of samey for years. So with that in mind, I'm going to have to give you, um, an E rank for sure. And so next up we have, um, probably the og of the YouTube OGs as far as Japan YouTubers go. So this guy, Post Tribble, Post a Tribble. I can never pronounce his name. Um, Matt, I think his name is, real name. Um, this dude is special for me because he was the first um, YouTuber that I came across that made videos in Japan. And this was back when like, he made stuff on Google Video. So before Google bought YouTube, they had their own video platform. It was called Google Video. And you could upload stuff longer than 10 minutes back when YouTube had a 10 minute um, upload time limit. So he posted some interesting stuff back in the day. Um, a lot of it has been copyright flagged since then. Some of his stuff's been muted, uh, which is sad because I really enjoyed his content. It was literally the first like Japan videos that I've seen on the internet. 
Um, by today's standards, it's, it's pretty cringy, pretty low quality. But again, you never forget your first time. So um, with that being said, since he doesn't make videos anymore, um, gonna have to give you F tier. So anyway, <laughs> sorry, Matt. So next up we have Rachel and June. These are probably like one of the most mainstreamy of the mainstream Japan YouTubers out there. Um, they've been just killing it lately. You know, they've been killing it for a long time actually. Uh, they were living in Nagoya for a while, and they've recently moved out to Fukuoka in southern Japan. And, you know, they've just been making videos of all kinds of different topics, you know. It's really interesting to see, um, like, couples channels, so especially interracial couples, because I think it's really cool to see the different perspectives from each person and how they deal with you know, the cultures of the other person. And Rachel and June's probably the biggest channel involving that, that I know of, certainly the biggest channel in Japan, that is. And, you know, the production value is definitely top notch. Uh, they have a lot of really good videos. They have like a lot of channels as well. So June has his own like cooking channel and he's made a lot of like viral hits like him Restoring like an old Japanese knife from like this rusty looking shank to like something that's all nice and shiny and stuff is really interesting. It's garnered like millions of views and of their own uh, main channel, they definitely generated a lot of views as well. And uh, my, my only criticism of them is that um, I feel like, again, like with a lot of bigger YouTubers, you know, the production value starts to get in the way of the personal connection that the people have with their audience. And I think that while it's nice to have like the high production, like lights and make sure everything's well lit and everything, um, all that kind of stuff for some videos, but I think it would also be interesting to have kind of like raw content as well, just kind of like them with their phone kind of walking around doing daily stuff for Whatever the case, you know, it'd be nice to kind of see a more raw side to Rachel and June. So that's that's my only criticism. Again, they're great people, and I wish them all the best. So with that being said, got to give them an A rank. So next up on the list is my boy, Mr. Rad Re from the Rad Culture. Uh, he also hosts a podcast called Why Come Japan? where he interviews different people from around Japan and asking them, why come Japan? <laughs> Just kind of interviewing them on how they uh, got to Japan and what was their reasoning and things like that. So I've known Rad for a long time. Um, he originally started up on YouTube making vlogs about his time at Temple University. And, you know, he's transitioned to more serious filmmaking as well as podcasting and things like that. And, you know, I'm really glad that he's getting, you know, good with the podcasting and things like that. So I'm really happy to see him succeed in that field. Uh, but that being said, as far as his YouTube videos go, um, podcast aside, um, he doesn't really do a whole lot as of late. And I wish that he would um, do more as far as, you know, YouTube vids, things like that. And I think that, you know, if if he were less afraid of failure, then he would be able to to do more, um, not just on YouTube, but just in life. So, sorry, Rad, but I'm going to give you a D. The next up on the list is Rambalo, Rambalo, Rambalo. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, but this channel is really interesting because um, this is the first channel that I found of that kind of raw Japan sort of content. Um, they basically just take like long walks around certain sections of Japan. I originally found this channel looking up videos of Yukosuka and I found that they did like a long hour plus walk around uh, the neighborhood in Yukosuka going through a lot of different places that I've gone through 
So for me, it was just a huge, uh, just bit of bit of nostalgia, and just seeing the same places, hearing the environment, and just you know chilling out. You know, it's just it's one of them channels again. You just kind of sit back, relax, and chill out. So between them and Nippon Wandering TV, um, this one was the first one. Um, I think that their stuff is just. It's a slight bit better, but that being said, I'll have to give them a solid B. But if we had like sub rankings, I'd probably give them like a B plus. So <laughs> there you go. And so next up, we have my man Brian from the Ramen Adventures channel. Now uh, Brian is is an interesting guy. Now for full disclosure, I have worked for Brian before. Uh, making videos for him, being his editor and stuff. And uh, he's probably most well-known for his Rom Adventures blog, which is a bit more updated than his YouTube channel. Um, but I have helped him work on a lot of videos for him for the past couple years now. And I only see his channel going up, but I really wish that you know he would uh, post more content you know, it doesn't have to be super duper long or whatever, but I wish that, you know, he posts some more content. Um, but, you know, the content's always high quality, and it's not just uh, me, like, humble bragging, but uh, definitely some good stuff. Definitely check him out, especially if you're, uh, you're into ramen. You'll find a lot of good resources with Brian. So, uh, that being said, I'll have to give him an A rank. And so next up, we have another recent subscription that I have, the Reformat Show. Now, this guy um, has gone around the world, around different parts of Southeast Asia as well. Uh, so he's kind of well-traveled, and um, he's recently done a lot of videos on Japan, so I decided to include him on the list as well. So he's kind of a, eh, but... Um, you know, his production value is pretty high. He goes to a lot of interesting places. Got a lot of good food recommendations. That's kind of his main deal. Um, so, you know, definitely got to recommend him pretty highly. But that being said, he also has, you know, Japan's not his main focus. So I'll have to give him uh, like a solid C. But definitely check his stuff out. Got some good material up there. So next up, we have a another new channel. This is Reina Amplify. Now she's come over from Instagram, and uh, she started her channel thanks to Eric Surf Six, um, and he's really helped her channel get off the ground. And they've really added their own style to it because her and her boyfriend Frankie run the channel, and they really have a very interesting take on things they do mostly food related things you know she cooks stuff and they also do like convenient reviews and things like that uh but she's just started the channel um they are cranking out videos pretty heavily so definitely looking forward to seeing where they go from here but um because they're so new I'll have to give them like a D rank or maybe like a C minus if we were doing sub ranks. Next up, we have Mashu B from the Ryman Gaijin channel. Ryman, che. So he's probably a little more well known for his Messy Pro 1 channel, but he does more updates now on his Ryman Gaijin channel, and he's probably more well known as the Ryman Gaijin. So he is a music producer out in Japan. Uh, he was going to school out in Japan, and he was working, doing other things out there. He's been in Japan for like freaking ever, <laughs> seems like. He's one of, one of the earliest uh, people I've subscribed to on YouTube, and he has a very interesting history. And uh, right now he's doing a like song a day type thing for a year, which is just crazy. So the dude's just killing it right now. So. Definitely got to give Mashu B a good, very solid B+. Ryman, che. And so next up we have someone who's very important to me. 
a, a true YouTube life inspiration, the late, great Roger Swan. Now, Roger was one of the first YouTubers that I followed um, doing his Japan thing. He was originally an exchange student from Western Michigan University, where I ended up going <laughs> later on. Um, but he was an exchange student. He went out to Keio University, which is like a very prestigious university in Japan. It's basically like the Harvard or Yale of, of Japan. It's definitely top tier for sure. And he made his videos out there as an exchange student uh, under the Tokyo Swan series. And later he went back to Western Michigan to graduate. And afterwards he got accepted into the JET program where he flew back to Japan to Hanamaki in Iwate Prefecture and started up a series again as Iwate Swan. And sadly he passed away from acute pancreatitis so you know it just his death was pretty profound for me because um it was somebody who was very close to my age he's a year younger than me and to see somebody like that just cut down in the prime of their life just you know is an example of the fragility of life and that we're not all guaranteed tomorrow. So, you know, live your life, basically. And, you know, his stuff is definitely, I always go back to watch his stuff. Um, even though his stuff is like nearly 10 years old now, um, the production value and stuff for the time was really good. Now it's, it's pretty dated, um, but for the time, it was definitely top notch and he was just such such a wholesome person such a very caring giving person and i honestly can't recommend roger enough like just go watch his stuff for sure if i had an ss or an s plus tier i'd put him in it 100 percent. but i'm sorry s is uh as high as i can go so there you go Next up, we have Ryan Schneider Vlogs. Ryan is an interesting cat. He is an American working in a traveling circus in Japan. And he started up his vlog channel. And it's really interesting to see his perspective on things because, again, um, he's not living the typical expat in Japan life of teaching English or you know, being a student or something like that. So to see these people living, you know, extraordinary or just different lives is really interesting. And I really enjoy watching Ryan's vlogs. And he also collaborates with a lot of other well-known YouTubers like Eric Surf 6 So you will definitely hear from him in the future. Only see good things for him. So definitely got to give him and uh, B rank right here. Next on the list, we have Sharla from the Charmander channel. Um, as far as Japan content goes, she's probably more well known for her Sharla in Japan series, her channel and series, <laughs> both. Uh, but she doesn't really update that channel anymore, so I decided to just use her Charmander channel, which is the one that she does update more frequently. So Sharla is an interesting case because uh, she is originally from Canada and um, she came over as an exchange student in Hanmaki, same city where Roger Swan was, and loved the country. And when she graduated, came back to work and live, um, doing various odd jobs and her Japanese level is tremendous. Although, you know, I don't think she really showcases it as much as, say, Loretta from Kamushi-chan does. Uh, I kind of wish that she would. Uh, some of her older videos were her just speaking entirely in Japanese. Um, I don't know if you'd go that far, but uh, definitely show off your Nihongo desu yo ne. <laughs> So I'd like to see her show that off a bit more. Um, maybe do like some lessons or some basic grammar, something, man. 
you know. But that being said, her videos on Japan are certainly very top notch. Um, she goes over a wide gamut of of things, you know, ranging from how to get to Japan to um, good skincare habits in Japan was a video she put out recently. And the thing I like about Sharla is that she's not afraid to, you know, tackle subjects that, you know, might get her demonetized. So she recently went to a, a very interesting uh, frog bar. I think it's called Kaguya Cafe or something like that. And the video got hella demonetized, but it was really fun. And uh, she knew it was going to get demonetized, but she made it anyway. And I just kind of like her attitude as far as that goes. It's like, fuck it, man. I'll just make it anyway. So um, definitely got to give her props. And she um, did move back to Korea a couple years back to live with her husband. Uh, they got divorced, but now she's moved back to Japan and is making videos once again in Japan. So I'm looking forward to see um, what she makes next. So got to give her... An A, absolutely. So next on the list is Simon and Martina. So another couples channel. Uh, you can tell I have a little soft spot for couples channels. It's always interesting. Uh, these guys, I believe, are from, uh, I think like Canada, America, not sure. <laughs> But uh, they're from North America, I guess. We'll cover all the bases, right? Um, but they're a foreign couple living in Japan. Uh, they originally got their start in Korea under the Eat Your Kimchi banner. Then they moved to Japan, switched over to Eat Your Sushi, and then they just rebranded to Simon and Martina, which I think makes more sense. Um, so they've been around the YouTube block for a while, made loads of, of great videos, um, and they have like a little podcast series as well. Uh, these guys <laughs> just keep turning out content. Uh, it's fantastic. So going to give them an A, a very easy A, probably like an A plus. <laughs> so next up, we got my man Dustin from Solo Travel Blog. And we're gonna rate this guy a five out of five dogs. So Dustin here um, does various videos around Japan. And he has this really cool radio smooth voice. And you know, his B-roll is really a top notch. And he also has a side channel talking about the various gachapon around Japan. And he's also recently been married to a lovely Japanese girl. And they run a channel called Japanese Questions Answered. And Dustin, if you're listening to this, please, for the love of all things dog, update that channel. I miss you. So, with that being said, I'm going to give Dustin a record of 5 out of 5 dogs. Or an A rank. <laughs> so, next up we have... Striving for Animation. So, this channel is a little different from the other channels that we've gone through so far. So, it's, it's uh, not necessarily Japan YouTuber type, but... It's an incredibly interesting channel because they go over um, how Japanese animation, anime, is made. Like, literally, like the programs that the animators use, the process for things. And I think it's, like, really super fascinating to see that. And it just really gets me giddy to actually see how the anime is made. Like, especially current stuff, because, like... Before, they used to use, like, hand-drawn cell animation stuff, but now it's all digital. And to actually see the programs used and to get recommendations for things is really fantastic. So definitely, if you uh, are a hopeless otaku weeb, um, you got to subscribe to this channel. It is fantastic stuff. So we're going to give them a solid B. Next up, we got... 
my friends Grace and Ryosuke from Texan in Tokyo. Now, um, Grace, who originally started the channel, she is the Texan in Tokyo in question. Um, she originally got her start um, blogging as well as making uh, little short comics. So I met Grace before she got started on YouTube. And, you know, one of her friends, um, or a mutual friend of ours, rather, um, told me about her comics and stuff. And I was like, ugh, great. Another, another friggin' webcomic. Like, really? But I thought it'd be nice and just read it anyway. And it ended up, like, really falling in love with the comic and just her personality, everything. And I was like, when I met her... I was like, you should really start up a YouTube channel. Like, I could really see this being a thing. Like, I originally envisioned, like, her starting, like, an animation channel. Kind of like what the, uh, like, the animation storytime YouTubers are doing. Like, way before that was even a thing. I mean, maybe Domix and Swoozie were around, but that was about it. So I kind of envisioned her doing something like that. But she kind of went with the route of, you know, couples YouTube channel, a la Rachel and June... But, um, I really liked her videos, man. Like, uh, Grace and Yosuke really did a fantastic job. Um, they were like Rachel and June, but more raw, more raw, more intimate. Um, they didn't have, like, the super production value and the fancy lights and the cameras and all that kind of stuff, like what Rachel and June have. Um, it was just, like, a couple in Japan doing their thing. And, like, if they wanted to show off, like, hey, we're going to make this interesting soup in Japan that costs, like, 500 yen or something like that. They'll make a video of it. And it'll be really interesting. And, you know, they've made a lot of good stuff. But they've decided um, about three years ago to give it all up and uh, raise a family. And while I'm really sad, I'm not going to get my... Uh, Grace and Yosuke fix anytime soon. Um, I'm definitely thankful for them for, you know, giving us the content that they did give over the years. Um, they've <clears throat> put out three successful books uh, through Kickstarter, and uh, they're up on Amazon. You can check them out. Um, definitely recommend them. So, but, you know, I do wish that they'd make videos again. But I do respect that, you know, they want to focus on family. So, with that in mind, I can't give them anything less than an S. So, next up, we have that Japanese man, Yuta. So, he's been making a lot of, um, he kind of started the whole, like, uh, man on the street type interview um, in Japan. He was the guy that I noticed that really started that up. And a couple other channels followed, but like he's to me, he's the OG of that. And you know, he has, you know, I can tell that channels like Find Your Love in Japan, uh, Nobita, really emulate a lot of what Yuta does. And you can tell because he has a really interesting style. Um, his production value is pretty good. It's not super cinematic, but it doesn't really need to be. You know, it's just, it's it's serviceable. And the real hook of his stuff is the content of it, not so much the production value. So he's definitely got a lot of interesting perspectives in his videos. You know, he interviews Japanese people about things, foreigners about things, about different issues in Japan and whatnot. And he just has a whole breadth of content. So... I'm going to have to give him a solid B for breadth of content. <clears throat> Next up, we have another channel that's been making waves as of late. The Black Experience Japan, The Melanated Files. So this channel is, is really interesting. Um, again, it, it kind of sort of takes some inspiration from... That Jap from that Japanese man Yuta, and also kind of mixes it in with sort of like a people of New York type vibe. That's kind of the vibe I get from Black Experience Japan. It's just like a people of New York, but more like people of Tokyo type thing. It just so happens that 
all the people are black. But I tune in for the stories. Um, you see a lot of really, really interesting stories with these people. Um, and they're not all Americans. You know, they come from different parts of the world. So it's not all African Americans. You know, it's from other parts of the world. But it's just fantastic stories from everybody. And it just goes to show that, you know, if you have a dream to do whatever in life, then there's always a way to make it happen. So really, really uplifting stuff. Um, the production value is top notch. And I really want them to succeed. And I think they will. They're, they're well on their way to doing so. So that being said, got to give them a solid A. Next up on the list is the red value. So this guy is kind of in the same vein as Green Cyclist. He's a bit of a shit poster, but not quite to the extent of Green Cyclist. Um, but he does have kind of clickbaity, but in kind of an endearing way sort of videos. Um, so he's got some pretty interesting stuff up. Uh, he's just recently started, or at least I recently discovered him. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where he goes from here. Um, definitely uh, some good value in the red value. So I'm going to give him a C. And so next up on our never-ending list of despair <laughs> is Tokidoki Traveler. Um, she is from New Zealand, Emma, and she's been living in Japan for the hottest of minutes. And she also works at Tokyo Creative with a lot of other, you know, top-tier YouTubers on here. And uh, her stuff is kind of... I don't know, man. Like, it's kind of like your typical girl in Japan type stuff. Um, you know, it's it's nice, but to me, it's just, like, very exceedingly average, I think. You know? It's just, like, it's kind of stuff that I've already seen before, but I still watch it because, you know, I'm <laughs> hopelessly addicted to that shit. Um, but her production value is pretty good, but it's just, the content's just average, so, um, we'll go ahead and put her squarely in the C category. So next up, speaking of Tokyo Creative, we have the Tokyo Creative channel, and they also have a Tokyo Creative talk channel and other stuff as well, uh, but I'm just reviewing their their main channel uh, for the sake of this video. So the Tokyo Creative Channel has some interesting things on it. Um, they have videos of their various creatives under their brand kind of going out and doing things. Uh, they also have the TCT time little talk sessions, kind of podcasty type thing. Um, I don't know if that's on that channel or if it's on the talks channel. I forget. But in any event, I'm kind of lumping them all together in it. In, uh, in any case. So uh, they got some fairly interesting stuff, but you know, if you've watched any of these other channels, you've probably already know the basic gist of it. But it's still pretty interesting to see a lot of other YouTubers kind of interacting with each other and answering questions and things like that. So definitely worth a watch. But um, for me, I've definitely kind of been there done that so i'm gonna give them a d so next up we have norm from tokyo lens who is also part of uh, tokyo creative by the way um i really get some very strong like peter mckinnon vibes from tokyo lens like every time i watch his videos i can just like hear him screaming in my mind I want to be like Peter McKinnon, but I'm not Peter McKinnon, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> Y'all got to cut that out, Norm. But that being said, he's a pretty interesting fellow, pretty swell guy, and he's a shamisen player in Japan, and he also does like freelance photography and stuff. 
Um, and he's got some really good videos. He does a lot of traveling, not just around Japan, but he also goes and tours other countries as well with his shamisen playing, so he takes you along for those. And, you know, his production value, because he likes to be, like, you know, Peter McKinnon light, is still pretty high. So, uh, I definitely like his stuff, despite how much I've been shitting on it. But uh, I really like Norm's stuff. Highly recommend him if you're not already subscribed. So we're going to put him squarely in the B category. And you can see the B is pretty heavy. <laughs> but we only got three more left, so uh, we'll just keep pressing on here. So next up we have the Big Papa. The OG OG J Vlogger. The true king of all Japan YouTubers. Like... This dude is like the original, Tokyo Kuni. Much like Roger Swan, Kuni is a massive inspiration for me. Even today, like, he was one of the first people, like, I go back and look at his videos, all his stuff that he does, all the little, like, camera shots and his storytelling and pacing, all derive from television, from his work in TV production, because he was in Japan for over 10 years, did some freelance work. He uh, worked for Fuji TV, I believe. Did a lot of Japanese media work as well. That was kind of his main bread and butter. And you could tell that he has some some serious chops when it comes to you know video making uh, that derived from his time in TV. And I just look at like all the stuff that he's done and like all the stuff that other people try to do, and I'm like, you know, Tokyo Kuni, Kevin Kuni. Whatever you want to call him, he started it all, man. Like, he started J-vlogging. He started, like, all this, like, B-roll cuts and kind of pacing it like TV. You know, he kind of had, like, a an Anthony Bourdain, no reservations style of video making. And his Life in Tokyo series is just, like, <laughs> to me, it's, like, the national treasure. It's, like, you know, uh, things you must see before you die type stuff. It's just, even though nowadays... There's people who've made stuff like his that's better edited and it's higher quality. Like, Cooney started all that, man. Like, he is the OG in all sense of Japan YouTubers. Like, he's the one that really got that all started. And, you know, we all gotta, all gotta pay homage to the Don, the GOAT, Tokyo Cooney. And I'm sorry, Cooney, there isn't anything better than S, but this will have to do, you know. Definitely, definitely check his stuff out, 100%. So next up on the list, we have Tomoko Des from the Tomoko Tomoko channel. Um, she's probably most well known for collaborating with a certain YouTuber who you might notice is not on the list because F isn't low enough. But in any event, Tomoko is really nice. She's such a sweetheart. She was always super nice to me. I met her several times um, went during these YouTube get-togethers in Japan. This is just a complete sweetheart. And like um, Asagi, uh, she is into fitness as well. She's into yoga. I believe she got certified as a yoga instructor recently. So good on her for that. So you see a lot of videos of her um, collabing with that other guy, but also she does her own thing and doing like yoga and just other things. So, um, just a real, real wonderful person. Um, definitely somebody who's been in the community for a long freaking time. So got to give her a solid B. And so last but not least, we have Yao Wu Films. So this guy, Tatsu is his name. Um, he is the boyfriend to Michaela, and he's also a filmmaker. Um, he does stuff not just in Japan, but also in other countries. And he has just a fantastic sense of video making, storytelling, Production values just through the roof. Amazing stuff. Um, and he collaborates a lot with Michaela and making her stuff as well. So 
when they started dating, her production value, which was already like phenomenal, like went <laughs> even beyond that when they started working together. Like, it's just crazy, dude. But that being said, just rating his own channel, um, he doesn't make YouTube stuff consistently. But of the stuff that he does make, again, top-notch stuff. Lots of good drone footage. You can tell he knows what he's doing with the camera. Um, just very high-quality stuff. Definitely check his stuff out. Um, but because he doesn't update on a regular basis, gonna have to give you a C. So, there you have it. There's all of the 70 people that I watch who are uh, Japan YouTubers. Now, again, if your favorite YouTuber hadn't made the list or wasn't ranked where they wanted to be, I'm sorry, this is my own personal list. This is how I personally feel uh, ranking these people through this popular tier list format for videos. Um, so, what do you think? Leave me your thoughts down below in the comments, in the booby boops. And uh, definitely check all these guys out, um, despite their rankings. I am subscribed to all of them, love all their content. Uh, so definitely check them out online, uh, watch their stuff. Let me know what you think. So, uh, once again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in this video. I know it's a long one, it's definitely a deep dive. Uh, but definitely want to thank you guys for tuning in. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.